Hello friends, this is Durga again from Technology Mentors slash ITVersity and as part of building enterprise data house using Hadoop ecosystem so far we have covered uh, uh, creating databases using Hive uh, creating tables using Hive loading data using Scoop and uh, Hive and also how we can actually come up with uh, ETL process leveraging uh, Hive load Scoop as well as uh, Hive insert commands and um, uh, and also as part of that we have covered uh, hive ddl which is to create the tables and create the databases and also the dml not exactly dml because dml is insert updates and deletes and it typically uh, talks about uh, manipulating each and every row so hence i called it, it as a, um, data load language because uh, in um, hadoop we typically load the data either using load or insert. Load uses uh, file system APIs and insert uses MapReduce APIs. But both of them typically load the data into the database. Hence, I call it as uh, data load language. And we have covered DDL and uh, data load language which includes in load and insert commands. And the third major portion uh, is uh, actually HiveQL and uh, typically when it comes to insert uh, from data warehouse perspective when you want to transform and load the data you have to combine hive ql and hive data load language especially insert so the insert has to have select query and uh, from there you can select the data from the underlying table apply all the transformations filtering conditions and uh, uh, others and then uh, insert into the target table so in this case, we uh, so far we have covered creating tables in ODS and load data into minimal transformations. And from there, if you want to load data into dimensional data model, which you typically use on enterprise data warehouse, you have to select data from the ODS tables, supply all the transformation rules that matches your dimensional model in EW and load data into those tables. So for example, we have already we already have uh, those databases if you get into hive and uh, type show databases you can see three databases retail underscore ew retail underscore ods retail underscore stage and if you go to retail underscore ew and type show tables there is a table called order fact and if you describe order fact the table structure where you, uh, which you have here uh, like order id order date product id quantity subtotal product price and product category department which is from other table um, it is completely different from any of the tables we have uh, if you go to the source database which is mysql So I am now logging into MySQL database, MySQL minus u and uh, username is uh, retail underscore dba minus p for password and password is Hadoop and uh, connecting to the retail db and you can see these six tables which is uh, uh, which represents our OLTP source and here you have orders, order items. Uh, if you describe any of those tables, they are no way close, uh, no way matches our uh, fact table structure. This fact table is a denormalized uh, uh, structure, uh, contains a denormalized structure using dimensional modeling principles, which includes uh, uh, building the fact tables, dimensions, report tables, etc., which I have covered at the time of physical data modeling. So what I'm trying to say is, 
uh, you have to apply a transformation such as joining multiple tables in this case order needs to be joined with order item uh, and also product to get to the product category department and then you might have to do uh, aggregations also depending upon the granularity at which you want to maintain this table so all these transformations needs to be developed and uh, simple insert statements with select queries we have done earlier is not good enough we ha we have to come up with more complex joins more complex transformations we need to have very good understanding of user defined functions if we don't have uh, uh, the user defined function uh, for our use case we might have to write our own user defined functions to apply certain transformations all these things you need to be aware uh, as part of high ql to um, effectively transform the data uh, as part of your etl process which you de which you will develop uh, in enterprise data warehouse running on a uh, hadoop ecosystem okay so hive query language and hive data load language are uh, uh, tightly coupled uh, you have to use both of them to apply etl uh, logic and uh, load into the final reporting tables or fact tables whatever it is in ew so coming to HiveQL architecture, it uses MapReduce framework. So when you actually run a high query, it dynamically generates MapReduce code and spawns one or more MapReduce jobs. So uh, for example, let me change Hive execution engine to MR. This is applicable only with Hortonworks sandbox. If you are using Cloudera uh, Quick Start VM, you don't need to set this by default it's map reduce and you can directly run run the queries but if it is hot and work sandbox then i will highly recommend to change it to mr so that you you compare the uh, you can actually troubleshoot your queries using uh, uh, resource manager in the similar manner in the similar manner you do in cloud era quick start vms now i have changed the execution engine to mr and let me go to retail underscore ods and let me run show tables and let me run the simple query select count of one from order items if you see the output it actually generates the map reduce job How come it did not even display the output? Let me see. I think for third count of one, it might have changed a little bit. Now you can see that it is actually issuing the MapReduce job and you can actually go to go to the browser type uh, sandbox hortonworks 8088 which will take to you take, take you to the resource manager and here it is still running you can click on this job and get to the details about the job okay the same way you actually troubleshoot uh, the map reduce jobs um, you have to you can go through it and you can actually uh, um, troubleshoot or uh, monitor the job and uh, under the covers it uses java code the query which is of this uh, this join query will be compiled into a java code at runtime and that java code will be submitted as a map reduce job and then you can actually go to the resource manager you, uh, web interface and try to troubleshoot the issue so here i'm just trying to explain you how a uh, high query will be run on the cluster uh, sometime later i will actually um, I, uh, point out all the important things which you need to keep in mind 
while troubleshooting the uh, uh, MapReduce jobs that will be running as part of our queries. As long as you understand that this query will be compiled into a Java code uh, with, uh, using MapReduce API and submitted as a MapReduce job, that is more than enough at this time. Okay, so I'm sorry. So now going back to the presentation, and that is the architecture of HiQL, and, uh, and now we will talk about uh, major differences with relational database. In uh, compared to relational databases, where it will have its their own proprietary um, query engine. Uh, how you this map reduce framework and most of the SQL features are still evolving especially the windowing functions or analytics you will you need to spend a lot of time in understanding the syntax and uh, subtle differences between the analytics functions or windowing functions in the traditional databases um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, in hive uh, and then uh, yeah it uses ANSI standards for joins in older versions of Oracle, typically people used to use this plus sign for left auto join. Uh, even now it is supported, but now even in relational databases, people are going away from that notation and they are trying to use ANSI standard for joins itself. And you need to use only ANSI standard for joins in Hive. And Hive is schema on read, I have covered uh, uh, earlier as well. Uh, so when we say schema on read, uh, it will try to see if there are any data type mismatches and all those things when you actually query the data and even if there are mismatches it will not fail it will just uh, return null values uh, rather than failing for example if you have a let me show you what i'm talking about now you have this table called uh, testing okay and if you see there is only one column and uh, sorry let's let's use departments select star from departments there are six uh, six rows and uh, if you look at the If you look at the column names, there are two columns, department ID and department name. And the location is okay. Now let me try creating a table with uh, department ID as string and department name as integer. Okay, so create table department testing. Let me do this. There is an easy way to get the syntax of the existing table. So, create table departments, and we can actually copy this one. Let me create external table. Create external table dips, and then copy paste so we are actually trying to create the external table on the existing table and table is created and you can run oh i'm sorry i have to change the data type drop table dpts okay now let me say create table create external table depths department id string and department name int and then rest of the thing are same It did not copy okay from here let's 
So now the table is created. Now you can see select star from DEPTS and hit enter. Uh, the numeric values can be represented as string. That's why it is showing up properly. But string values cannot be represented as the integers. That's why it is showing null. What we are proving here is it is actually schema on read. Even in that case, if the data types are inconsistent, it will only return null value instead of throwing an error. So that's why Hive is scheme on read compared to relational databases which are scheme on write. And uh, uh, then Hive is primarily intended for batch processing, uh, whereas traditional RDBMSs are primarily for uh, for uh, uh, random uh, uh, operations. It is not batch, but it's real time and random in nature. So those are the major differences when it comes to comparing with relational databases. As part of the next video, we will see how simple queries can be written and then we will get into the more advanced features. And these are the uh, things which we will be covering as part of uh, the presentation in next three or four videos, depending upon uh, the amount of time it takes uh, to cover each of these topics. That being said, I hope you are enjoying the content so far on my channel. If you uh, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please do so. If you like the video, please click on the like button. And if you want to provide feedback or ask any technical question respect to a particular video, please use the comment section of the video. Thank you. Bye.